Russia's attack on Ukraine has moved into a second day. So what do added sanctions on Russia mean for the crypto world? Welcome to The Daily Forecast, February 25th, 2022. I'm Megha Chada of Forecast covering all things blockchain. It has been suggested that Russia could try leveraging crypto to evade tightening financial sanctions. But is that a realistic prospect? We'll take a look at that story and a whole lot more coming up. Let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. Join thousands of NFT traders who already start their day on Crypto Slam. Let's see how the situation in Ukraine is hitting the crypto world. First up, trading volume on Ukrainian crypto exchange Kuna has more than tripled in just one day. 24-hour trading volume on Thursday morning Asia time was at around 1.5 million US dollars. But it zoomed to just under 5 million US dollars by Friday morning. Kuna users now face a hefty 7% premium over the global Bitcoin price due to demand outstripping supply. Bitcoin was trading at $41,546 there as against a global price of $38,733. And the crypto market as a whole saw some recovery by Friday morning following Thursday's sell-off with Terra leading the charge and surging over 21%. Meanwhile, though the suggestion of restricting Russia's access to the global payment messaging service SWIFT has not been acted on yet, tougher financial sanctions have been imposed. But could using crypto offer a way to evade them? Focus News' Timmy Shen reports. The SWIFT financial messaging service was set up back in the 1970s and now operates in over 200 countries, enabling cross-border transactions to happen securely. Following a meeting of G7 world leaders discussing sanctions on Russia, the UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson said nothing is off the table and the possibility of cutting off access to SWIFT remains. However, several experts told Forecast that even if that does happen, Russia is unlikely to turn to crypto to evade financial sanctions. Amnon Summit of Israel-based cybersecurity company Bitmint said that Russia may instead expand its homegrown system for transfer of financial messages, which is already used by many local banks. Summit also says that the recent move to regulate the circulation of cryptocurrencies could be a precursor to the issuance of stable coins backed by the ruble, which could offset issues caused by its disconnection from SWIFT. However, he says that would take some time to implement. And Robbie Leo of Babel Finance told us that with mainstream stablecoins denominated in US dollars, it's particularly unlikely those will be used. And one expert told Forecast that the transparency of the blockchain is a powerful deterrent, as blockchain analytics could be used to detect and create alerts over suspicious transactions. Blockchain analytics is going to be really critical for governments to make sure that they enforce and disrupt efforts to evade sanctions and to get ahead of any of those uh, efforts. Malcolm says that at present, channelists are not seeing any unusual activity in Russia or Ukraine. We're closely monitoring our data set of exchanges for any sort of spikes in activity that we might see. That being said, however, we have uh, seen in terms of ruble Bitcoin trading pairs, we are definitely seeing a spike uh, in, in those. So it seems some investors in Russia are switching their rubles into Bitcoin, possibly as a safe haven. For Forecast, I'm Timmy Shan. Taking a look at what's happening around the rest of the region. In South Korea, crypto businesses are scrambling to meet the Financial Action Task Force, or FATF's travel rule. The rule will be in full effect in the country from March 25th. The FATF rule requires crypto firms collect and disclose customer information on transactions above a threshold of 1,000 US dollars. Around 30 Korean crypto and blockchain firms have partnered with Code, which is a joint venture formed to meet that rule. Code's solution uses blockchain to record the required data on nodes operated by members in a distributed server. The exchange 
Bitam says the testing of Code's solution has been completed by Bitam, CoinOne, and Corbit, and that partnerships with various domestic and international crypto services are now being reviewed. While global exchanges have been hesitant to incorporate the travel rule due to privacy concerns, South Korea is leading the way in embracing it. And over in Australia, while the country's sunny skies and wide open spaces might seem like the perfect place to mine Bitcoin using solar power, things may not be as simple as that. Forecast Lachlan Keller has more from Melbourne, Australia. With environmental concerns over Bitcoin mining high on the agenda, Australia might seem like an ideal choice to take advantage of large-scale Bitcoin operations. After all, deserts make up nearly 20% of the country's landmass, so they would seem perfect for the industry to draw an abundant availability of solar energy. Not only that, regulators in the country are starting to see the potential in the industry, with a recent parliamentary inquiry recommending a 10% tax concession for mining operations using 100% renewable energy. Nick Hughes-Jones of Australian Bitcoin mining operator Mawson Infrastructure to forecast news there's a lot of interest from the industry. However, he warns it's not for everybody. To start with, the cost of keeping mining rigs cool when temperatures in Australia's deserts often exceed 40 degrees Celsius for weeks at a time could be prohibitive. Added to that, the further away facilities are from electrical infrastructure, the higher the costs due to energy dissipation in the power grid. So potential Bitcoin miners might be better looking elsewhere, like the cooler and more accessible states of Victoria or Tasmania. Indeed, Mawson itself operates Australia's biggest mining facility away from the desert, in Byron Bay on the east coast, working in partnership with Crimbrook Infrastructure to draw power from a biomass facility there. For Forecast, I'm Lachlan Keller from Melbourne, Australia. And that's the Daily Forecast from our vantage point right here in Asia. We bring you the latest from the blockchain world Monday to Friday. Hit like, hit subscribe, appreciate it always. Help us reach our goal to reach lots more of you. For more, visit forecast.news. I'm Mika Chada. Until next time.